So, pre-renal, give normal saline, restore the uvolemia, stop antihypertensive medications, and remove the offending agents, and if required, put a Swangange catheter, and try to closely, what, the, what will Swangange catheter will be doing? It will calculate pulmonary capillary wedge pressure, which is the pressure of left atrium. So, that is an important indication. Why? So, well, the fluid is more. Patient goes into pulmonary edema. What is pulmonary edema? Increased pulmonary capillary pressure, which can be monitored by placing a swan ganz catheter. So, that's the reason. Acutely, if you are not sure, clinically, you can't manage uh, fluid... Uh, uh, fluid administration it becomes an indication to put a swan ganz catheter for example i'll give you a clue somebody had history of heart attack a part of his myocardium is ischemic and necrotic he has got a poor cardiac functioning such a guy has developed a renal failure in him what is the challenge for you if you give too much fluids, heart cannot tolerate it and he will go into pulmonary edema. If you don't give fluids, the kidney's renal perfusion is gone and he will go into ATN. So you need to judge how much fluid need to be given, when to not go speedier, when to go moderately good. How can you judge it if your patient is having a poor cardiac function? Put a swan gange. Swan gange will help you as a friend to say how much are the pressures in the pulmonary capillaries so that is the fluid input is adequate or not or is it uh, excessive that the patient is going to go into pulmonary edema. So swan gange monitoring is very important part of your intensive care management of a patient of ARF who already has an underlying poor cardiac function is what need to be remembered. So now, what decides the prognosis in a patient of ARF? Why is it important for you? Why is it important for you? In the villages, little creatinine shot up also, they will declare that kidneys are damaged and sent to you. So doctor, when you are admitting a patient, a very, very reasonable question asked by them is, doctor, Will Bhimaya re recover? Will Ramaya will recover? It's a natural anxiety of the patient's attendants. How will you say whether he will recover or not? Are you a god to say that? You will check why is the ARF. If the ARF is because of hypovolemia due to recurrent vomiting and diarrhea, what will you tell the patient's attendants? No problem, Ramaya or Bhimaya will recover. Because I will give them good fluid, still ATN has not occurred in them. They will recover. You have a patient of acute malaria with acute renal failure who came to you. You know it is treatable cause, malaria. Acutely you will manage the kidney with uh, dialysis. At the same time treat malaria, patient will recover. He will go home thanking you. So, there are some indicators which decide the ultimate prognosis in ARF. Number one, what is the severity of renal failure? Amount of oliguria, amount of tubular dysfunction, the need of dialysis, the duration of renal failure, they are all the things which you need to judge. Health of the patient, is he a very geriatric patient or a young individual and are there any reversible causes? for the development of ARF. Then clinical circumstances like the cause, the severity and the number and type of other failed organs. Sometimes if there is a diffuse sepsis, liver fails, kidney fails, heart fails, brain fails, cerebral edema is there. Multi-organ dysfunction of sepsis it is called as. Then there is a poor prognosis because all organs are affecting the other indirectly. So you must know whether renal failure is an isolated renal failure or a part of a multi-organ dysfunction which will ultimately decide the prognosis. Then if it is an intrinsic renal failure, how are you going to manage? Commonly intrinsic renal failure means ATN. 
once adn develops only thing you can do is support your treatment and remove the offending agent and depending upon the degree of damage to the tubules ultimate prognosis depends on if it is a post renal failure relieve the obstruction call a urologist colleague if it is bph if it is obstructive uropathy if it is ureteric obstruction he will be able to do surgery and relieve it and patient will respond so that's all the story of arf summarize doctor in five words for your tomorrow's exam main thing you should know you may know a lot of things the whole art of writing and passing exams and flaring up in medical school is art of summary arf due to pre renal post renal intrinsic renal those five laboratory parameters how to differentiate if you know then that algorithm which is being given to you if you are able to put it that's all everything else you can write the story from what you heard now okay doc now we are talking about chronic renal failure what is meant by chronic renal failure otherwise called ckd chronic kidney disease progressive reduction in the gfr or a period of months to years defines the chronic kidney disease what is the common cause doctor after 40 either you get hypertension or diabetes if you don't get either of them what will you get boredom about life because uh, all your friends are dying one after the other every day and you are the only healthy guy living up to 90 how is it possible it's very boring to attend funerals so there's a reason uh, diabetes is the com most common cause for the development of chronic kidney disease top film stars top politicians a poor man anybody can be the victim of ultimately the kidney disease if he got diabetes and what is our responsibility as a primary physician when you diagnose a patient at the age of 38 or 40 with diabetes just writing few anti diabetic drugs and sending home is not enough you need to talk to him about all complications how to monitor what is importance of a good glycemic control what is the measures to prevent the progression and the onset of the diabetic nephropathy retinopathy neuropathy etc etc so doctor diabetes is the most common underlying cause of the diabetic nephropathy and why we indians are very vulnerable we take breakfast rice lunch rice dinner rice midnight also if we feel hungry we go into kitchen and prepare rice and eat what will rice do rice will acutely raise your uh, blood glucose and that will cause insulin to pump out and in no time rice eaters will end up in the habit of uh, diabetes that's the reason you go to some coastal areas in india where rice is very very passionately eaten by the people unlike in punjab where they eat more of wheat and other things so where do you want to start practice as a nephrologist in the typical coastal area because in coastal area you have rice eating population rice eating population get diabetes diabetes means that lead to nephropathy nephropathy means you have a lot of business as a nephrologist so there's a reason doctor everything perpetuates into other so diabetes is the most common cause that's what i want to strongly make you remember second hypertension for one fourth causes of the chronic kidney disease then chronic glomerulonephritis lupus nephritis or any other chronic glomerulonephritis 15% of causes then interstitial nephritis polycystic kidney disease obstructive uropathy there are the other remaining causes which lead to development of chronic kidney disease based on the gfr how do you grade chronic kidney disease into mild moderate severe and esrd esrd means end stage renal disease 70 to 120 ml per minute gfr defines mild 
30 to 70 is moderate, less than 30 is severe, and less than 10 defines the end stage renal disease is what I want to underscore to all of you. Now, plasma creatinine is a very, very important indicator of GFR. Higher creatinine means lower GFR, so it is inversely related. We calculate what is called creatinine clearance, which is an important measure of how is the progression of the renal failure, chronic renal failure. In this context, you must know what is meant by Cockcroft Gold formula, by which you can be able to calculate the creatinine clearance. Very simple. 140 minus age in years. Let us say 50 kg, 50 years old man is there, doctor. 140 minus 50 is how much? 90. 90 into his weight, let us say 70 kg man. 90, 70 is 6300. Divided by his serum creatinine, let us say it is 1.5. 6300 by 1.5, that is how you calculate the creatinine clearance. Of course, there are cages, there are years, and the micromoles per liter, which are all involved. Uh, then for men, you need to multiply the value by 1.2. And for the women, the same formula will apply for you to calculate the creatinine clearance, which is an important indicator of uh, the progression of the renal failure, is what I want to underscore to all of you. <coughs> Put some fans eh? Okay, doctor. Chronic kidney disease. When the patient is having CKD, how does he present? He walks into the OPD with hypertension, which is the common presenting problem. And there is a water and salt retention. Congestive heart failure can worsen. And when chronic kidney disease is there, there is excessive amount of urea. And urea can lead to uremic pericarditis. Can one of the important complications of chronic kidney disease. If you have pericarditis in cardiology, we discussed. What is a very important auscultatory finding? Chick, 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 chick. Like a triphasic pericardial friction rub of pericarditis is there, no? Where will you first time learn as undergraduate student? Don't expect in cardiology ward. Go to the nephrology ward. You have a severe uremic chronic kidney disease patient sitting there. Put you on stethoscope. You will find chick 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 the triphasic sound of uremic pericarditis. Tomorrow morning only you must go and appreciate the triphasic sound of pericarditis. <coughs> 